For 33 years, this city has been abandoned. Everything was left behind. Toys, shoes, books. Even the kids' schoolwork is here. It looks like uh, they're practicing their handwriting in this book and I want to leaf through it, but we've been told we can't touch anything because the dust covering this might be radioactive, but it's incredible being here. This is Pripyat, now a city of ghosts. At its peak, it was home to 50,000 people. A model Soviet city built to service the nearby Chernobyl nuclear reactor. With a modern hotel, an indoor swimming pool, even an amusement park. Today, Pripyat is being brought back to life thanks to the wildly popular HBO series Chernobyl. The site of the world's worst nuclear disaster is now a major tourist destination. We're two hours out of Kiev, and up here is the Chernobyl checkpoint where the exclusion zone begins. And there are dozens of tourist buses here, hundreds of tourists. It really feels like we're going to Disneyland. Hello, hello. Oliver. They don't always come dressed for the occasion. We forgot to, to wear uh, long pants, so uh, we had to buy we had to buy a, a, a special suit um, just to, to enter the, the the town. The tourists hail from all corners of the planet, including Australia. <laughs> Nick Singh is from Melbourne. So that's why I want to visit this site to see the actual uh, ground report. So that what interested me because I heard a lot of stories about. In documentary, there are mutants there, oh, they are <laughs> creatures inside. The tourist zone is still highly restricted due to radiation risks. For their safety, each visitor is assigned a guide and a gigameter. You will see already much higher level of the radiation than we saw before. Tourists measure radiation levels along the way. Limited exposure to one or two microsieverts is safe, and that's what they're likely to get if they stay on the paths. But there are hot spots, and within just a metre, it can spike to extraordinary levels. Down here, it's jumped straight to 30 microsieverts. Prolonged exposure at this level is dangerous. Those working here could be risking their health. Guides like Lara Graldina are spending more and more time here as the demand to visit Chernobyl increases. I come here quite often. Oh, nowadays it's very busy and I spend here about 20, 22 days a month. The busiest day maybe this year, what I remember was more than 1,200 or 1,200 a day. I can be wrong, but about 70,000 people last year. And this year I even can't count a forecast. I, I absolutely don't know, but I, I suppose two times higher. Chernobylski tourism, I think, is a very positive полезное, полезное в смысле сохранение памяти об этом событии. 
На самом деле все зависит от того, как к этому относится сам турист. Алексей Брайас жил в Припьяте до эксплозии. Он работал как Чернобыльский нуклеарный инженер. Здесь собирались, проводились разные мероприятия. Детские какие-то мероприятия перепроводились. Колесо обозрения только строилось, его не было. On April 26, 1986, everything changed. A routine safety check went horribly wrong and exposed terrible flaws in the design of the Chernobyl plant. It sparked an explosion which tore open reactor number four. Six hours later, Breas arrived for his morning shift. разрушенный блок и подумал о том, что этого не может быть. Хотя на самом деле примерно с 11 часов дня уже было понятно, что реактора нет, он разрушен, и охлаждать нечего. Но вот постоянно поступали звонки из Москвы от чиновников, которые требовали не прекращать подачу воды к реактору. И хотя вода в 10 часов утра просто закончилась и подавать было уже нечего, Alexei Brayas and his colleagues were stuck in the nightmare of Soviet denial, while the exposed reactor pumped 400 times more radioactive material into the atmosphere than the bomb dropped on Hiroshima. На земле лежали черные куски. Судя по всему, это были куски графита из реактора. Я участвовал в монтаже четвертого реактора, я знаю, как выглядит графит, но я не позволил себе поверить, что это действительно графит. Over the next 12 months, more than 200,000 so-called liquidators were called in to clean up the site. Друзья, с которыми я был хорошо знаком или был даже в дружеских отношениях, некоторые из них погибли, это, естественно, очень печально. Когда я узнавал в первое время о том, что погиб один, другой, третий, это были трагические вести, это было трудно перенести. More first responders would eventually succumb. A UN report in 2005 found fewer than 50 people died as a direct result of the accident and estimated 4,000 people could die from radiation exposure. Pripyat's state-of-the-art hospital was the Chernobyl front line. These corridors would have been absolutely chaotic with nurses and doctors trying to save people. This is where they brought the firemen who were trying to put out the reactor. The uniforms of those first responders were stripped off them and they've been stored in the basement down these stairs, now contained under a giant mound of sand. It's the most radioactive part of the building. The government ordered the city's evacuation 36 hours after the explosion. Pripyat's 50,000 residents had just hours to pack. They were initially assured they'd be back three days later. They left everything behind. The Ferris wheel never actually operated. Its opening was scheduled five days later.
six days after the explosion, an exclusion zone of 2,600 square kilometres was established across Ukraine and Belarus. More than 300,000 people were forcibly removed from their villages. But a few returned. About a year after the disaster, Sofia Bezvahaya took an enormous risk and came back home. For decades, Sofia has grown her own food in her own soil in her village of Kupavate. The radiation here is less intense than in other parts of the exclusion zone. Краще для нас. Для мене курорт це мій труд. Це курорт. Це мій город, щоб я встала і подивилась, як білочка орешки збирає, як соловейко тьохкає, як зизуля. It's early in the season and her strawberries are still a little tart. At 73, she lives a hardy outdoor lifestyle with few of the mod cons. Is it cold? Oh, it's good. What about in winter? Sophia doesn't need to worry about her modesty. Before the accident, Sophia ran the local council. This is all that's left. She was placed in charge of the local evacuation. Ну так воно і сталося. Хоч говорили на три дня, на три дня беріть тільки одні документи. Так люди зробили, побрали тільки одні документи. Ну а виходить, що назавжди виселили. Дуже важко це згадувати, дуже важко. Surprisingly, Sophia's not alone. There are about 120 so-called self-settlers still living in the exclusion zone. Hannah Zavarotnya is 85 and lives a short walk away. She insists we sit down for a meal and a glass or two of her homemade moonshine. <laughs> You make this vodka? Oh, it's really good. Hannah's son has come for his first visit in two months, and there's much to do.
living on contaminated land is a choice they've made. The government turns a blind eye to the Chernobyl self-settlers, including their local priest, who serves the elderly community and the others who live here for short stints, shopkeepers, soldiers and officials. Another group is drawn to the exclusion zone for very different reasons. They're illegal explorers, known as stalkers, who seek out the danger. Life among deaths is the main philosophy of stalkers. Kirill Stepanats has snuck into the exclusion zone about a hundred times in the past decade. Stalkers deliberately push the boundaries to explore the zone's abandoned buildings and Soviet-era structures on their own terms. Kirill Stepanats has turned his passion into a business. Tonight, he's taking four young British men into the no-go areas of the exclusion zone. It's an amazing experience that most people can't say they've done. And Stand. I think it'll be worth it. Standard ones just seem so boring. Can't, I'm going to explore the cities. I'm so restricted. They said there would be like uh, wolves and wild horses, and we've never seen that in England. None of that. I mean, uh, Adrian's seen like a lynx once. <laughs> once, maybe, but we've never seen any of that. They'll trek for several days and cover about 80 kilometres. Should be a long way, very hot, a lot of fucking mosquitoes. But I hope everything will be all right. Let's go. Thank you. Can I get my radio ad shirt in there? Hi, Stark. It's very dark. I'm gonna use it. Uh, I don't know. Don't know what to expect. In one of the most contaminated places on the planet, stalkers seem underprepared. This this is the only food we have to eat for three days. <laughs> for three days. <laughs> the texture is slightly changed. Kirill reminds them they'll have to evade the police. Just one kilometer from here, first political point. Наши там власти говорили о том, что нужно закручивать гайки, но наш народ таким образом воспитан, что чем больше запрещают, тем больше он будет этого хотеть. Outside the exclusion zone, the radioactive fallout is still present. 
In the forests, locals forage for blueberries, raspberries and mushrooms, as they've done for generations. Everyone here has been touched by the accident. Dangerous levels of radiation are still in the food chain across northern Ukraine, poisoning the environment and contaminating people. On the outskirts of Kiev, a hospital treats the most recent victims. It's called the Institute of Specialised Radiation Protection. It opened three months after the explosion, but it is still taking on hundreds of new patients every year. All of them are children. There are more than 350,000 Ukrainian kids who are suffering from a range of health conditions related to the disaster. Natalia Moshko is the Institute's senior nurse. Правда, що треба спочатку ґрунт весь прийняти з території, яка забруднена. З ґрунтом прийняти всі дерева, всі трави, всю 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 рослинність. І тоді піде радіація. Цього б не було зроблено. Все залишилося так, як воно є. Розкажи мені, що ти сьогодні на сніданок, на другий сніданок у тебе було? Christina is nine and comes from a small village in the province that borders the Chernobyl exclusion zone. Зараз Христині проводять тест на те, як працює головний мозок, як взагалі проходить кров по судинах, які імпульси виникають у головному мозку. They say they're testing for epilepsy. Like many children here, Christina already has thyroid problems. Мама деколи тушніть, бо голова болить, як в животі кружиться. But many more generations are likely to suffer. It's the children who are most vulnerable to radiation exposure. The Institute struggles to cope with outdated equipment and a lack of funds. Я не думаю, що діти взагалі розуміють суть хвороби. Розуміють что это небезопасно и страшно. Ну, это измерение длительное, 30 секунд. Some of the children stay here for 21 days just to reduce their exposure to contamination in their home villages. But when they go home, the cycle begins again. Больше такие разочарования. Тому що докладаєш багато зусиль, даєш дітям душу, а повертаються вони туди, де все починається спочатку. Ну не в наших силах змінити ситуацію, конкретно не в наших не в силах нашого закладу. The capital city Kiev looks grand, but the reality is Ukraine is one of the poorest countries in Europe. 
And 33 years after the worst nuclear accident in history, you might think Ukraine would look elsewhere for its electricity, but you'd be wrong. Ukraine is so poor, it's been forced to continue operating its ageing fleet of nuclear power plants. We've been given rare access to one of Ukraine's operational nuclear power plants, Melnitsky. It's incredible being in here. This nuclear plant was actually designed and built before Chernobyl happened. It's not the only one, and nine of Ukraine's 15 reactors are still in operation, even though they've reached the end of their designed lifespan. A national safety upgrade has been underway to keep them open, but by the end of last year, only 60% of the work had been done. Yevhen Nozikov, the plant's deputy chief operating engineer, admits Khmelnytsky reactor number one will be the tenth to be brought back online before the safety improvements are finished. He insists another Chernobyl-type accident could not happen. Ukrainian energy campaigner Irina Holovko says the risks are just far too great. This is why we call them zombie reactors, because from other one hand, we have them running, we use the electricity from them, and from the other hand, we understand that there are safety shortcomings. I think that the main lesson of Chernobyl is that there is no safe nuclear power. I mean, the accidents of the scale that can have the tremendous impact on people and on the environment, even far beyond the borders of the country where the plant is operating, these type of accidents are possible and they do happen. For now, the Chernobyl reactor is encased in a 30,000 ton steel structure known as the new safe confinement. Scientists estimate the reactor inside will remain radioactive for 20,000 years. The area may never again be suitable for human habitation. Radiation is radiation. I've already said that it's not a living being. 